The tomato potato psyllid is an insect that breeds on many commercial crops, including potato, tomato, eggplant and capsicum. At Plant and Food Research, scientists are monitoring psyllid populations so they can better understand and control the pest. The psyllid and the Liberia bacticus issues in all the Solanaceae crops. So you're talking hot chilies, uh, sweet peppers, your tomatoes, tamarillos. Um, they also can go in goji berries, um, can go in eggplant as well. So you have to think about all these crops. And then of course we also have Solanaceae that are weeds or uh, shrubs and that are present in New Zealand as well. For potato, it's the zebra chip disease that makes it really hard to process. And then for tamarillos, it kills the whole tree, so the growers have to chop them down and start planting new trees. The outdoor tomatoes, they have issues as well, but they still get relative okay yields. For the glasshouse crops like capsicums, your, your, your tomatoes and your hot peppers, um, it's a more controlled environment, so they can put in natural enemies to control within the glasshouse. The first response was how to control the insect vector, really, because that's how the bacterium is spread from plant to plant and from crop to crop. After that, they had a good look at the natural enemies that are present in New Zealand, and we found quite a few, so ladybirds and their larvae. We've got hoverfly larvae as well, or lacewing larvae that all attack uh, the psyllid life stages. But the main way to control the psyllid is still spraying insecticides, unfortunately. The impact is quite significant, really, with the use of chemicals and getting into a spray program that we've, you know, we've had to adopt into regarding processing and for export potatoes and for local market as well. Yields have decreased. Well, it can affect the yield, and it has been it has been proven on affecting yields. Um, so, you know, that, that is something that's been quite significant. Um, at the moment, that looks pretty clean. Yep. Yeah, well, our spray program hasn't started on these here yet with it being an early season. Yeah. Um, They've got sticky traps in the crops in the growing season. They're checking them every week and getting back to us with how many psyllids that we've got. Generally, they increase from around that Christmas, New Year period, and then as it's got drier, the psyllids do increase from that period. What we're looking at in this trial is just the feeding of the psyllid itself without the bacterium present. And what we do is we apply the psyllid at different stages of the plant. So the first ones will go on very early on in the process and then we'll wait another three to five weeks and we stagger that all the way till about two weeks up to harvest. And what we found previously is that when the psyllid feeds very early, you do see a response in an increase in tubers, but that they're a bit smaller as well, so uh, not really good for the growers. Focusing on just controlling the insect, we've been looking at insecticides, trying to reduce the number of them using the ones that are benign to the beneficial insects. We've also looked at uh, agricultural oils, uh, to implement those in a spray program so there is less uh, chemical insecticides used. We also looked at trying to develop some lures, whether it is, it's around pheromones or whether it's around compounds, uh, plant compounds for example, that attract the psyllid to a trap but at the moment um, that's not going anywhere really, uh, so we're still looking into that. We're looking at if they're attracted um, to lights, different kinds of lights, like the, the yellow and the green, for example. Uh, we do get some response in the lab, but when we go out in the field, uh, most of the, the things that we look at, we don't get a response at all, really. Um, so it's just stuff that continues at the moment, trying to find something that's probably useful for the greenhouse industry, but not so much for potatoes. We're also looking at how psyllids communicate to each other, trying to understand uh, if there is a call from the males to the females or vice versa to see how they communicate. And if we can disrupt that call and you know, have a similar thing to say mating disruption, for example, where they can't talk to each other and they can't find each other anymore. What we see here is uh, potato plants that they use for breeding. 
So they're using the true seed, so the, the little berries that the flowers after they've been pollinated will form. And they do some crossings with that. And this is all for resistance breeding. So not just for the psyllids, for example, or for the bacterium, the Liberibacter, but they're also breeding for nematode resistance, for example. And they're still looking if there are any traits within the lines that they get, you know, that are actually some resistance to pests or diseases. At the moment, we've got two lines that look quite promising. They will continue working on those, but it might still be a few years before they're commercially available. It's a tricky pest to deal with, and the bacterium as well. The research that we're doing at the moment still has a lot of really basic science in it, trying to understand the system, trying to understand the bacterium, trying to understand the ecology of the psyllid. And I keep my fingers crossed for resistant or tolerant varieties. I think those are the answers because that will lower the number of sprays that we have to use for to control the psyllid. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.